Hello BookTube, I'm back with the Shelf Tour. Uh, this is Shelf Tour 22, and it's Folio Books Shelf 1. And uh, I'll split these up, i got three shelves, so we'll do three videos over three days uh, for the folios. First one that I have, I've pulled them all off because it's just easier to access, is Charles Lamb Essays. Uh, it's without the uh, case at the moment, and the case is in the other room. Uh, it's it's rough, and I think that's why I took it off. Uh, it's Oler Folio Society, uh, 1963. It's edited with an introduction by Rosalind Valance and John Hampton. Wood engravings, engravings by Frank Martin. And it's nicely looking. Uh, it's in good shape. Uh, it's just the case wasn't. It's kept it from uh, being damaged. So there's the title page. And let's see if I can find some engravings. Uh, there's at the top of a chapter. Can you see it yet? Yeah, they look like they're all at the tops of the essays uh, in sort of a reddish brown. Uh, ink, which are quite nice. Uh, there we go. So yeah, there's one, and I'll just slide them over here. Do these here first, and here is why they get a bit dirty. The cases. That's what they're for, I guess. Um, here is Dylan Thomas under Milkwood, Folio Society's newer one. Uh, black is plain, uh, purple. It is Under Milkwood, A Play for Voices, edited with an introduction by Douglas uh, Cleverdon, lithographs by Cherry Richards. It's London, 1972, but uh, this edition, uh, ninth printing, 2014. I'm not overly joyed about the illustrations myself, but I wanted to get it um, because I do like Under Milkwood uh, very much so, and it's... Uh, Uh, it's just got one of the best, like, two words that just say everything hyphenated. It, it, to begin at the beginning, it is spring, moonless night in a small town, starless, and Bible black. I think Bible black says so much. It's so, so evocative of so many things. It is simple, yet a lot there. Search of England by H.V. Morton. Nice pictorial covers. Yeah, that's that way. H.V. Morton was very collectible at one time. I do like his stuff. He's done everything. Search of. Uh, I used to have quite a few, but uh, I've got a couple now with dust jackets, and they're very, very nice dust jackets if you get the originals. So, um, this is Search of England by H.V. Morton. Introduction by Simon Jenkins and illustrated by Peter Bailey, the Folio Society 2002. And there's an example of the first piece. And it was first published by Methuen in 1922. Let's see if I can find another, at least one more. Illustration. I kind of like these illustrations. They're simple. But yeah, that's a nice one. Uh, this is a little tight in there and sucking air. This is uh, Seven Gothic Tales by Isaac Dennison. That uh, is just really nice. Uh, 
and well nicely illustrated. It's introduced by Margaret Atwood, illustrations by Kate Bailey, uh, Bailey, I guess it is, in 2013 by Folio Society, and there's the frontispiece. Sometimes they really go all out for for illustrations. And this is one that's just amazing, and just even on the cover, too, it's just amazing. It's a little dark, but I think I missed one at the beginning. Um, no, I think I did that. Oh, no, there was one. No, I did. No, I did show them all. But yeah, that's quite nice. Oops. Uh, here's another older one. Just a plain, very plain uh, slipcase. It's Roderick Random by Tobias Smollett. I do like his writing, so I will pick up anything, especially when it's a pound or two. That well, this was two pounds. Um. This is, if I can get to the title page, uh, it's Wood Engravings by Frank Martin, and it's 1959. And they're small engravings, but they're nice. Example. And yeah, it's it's still it's still quite nicely done. Uh, it's just they had a, I guess they didn't uh, think of doing nicer looking slip cases. That this is something that I have talked about uh, before. Uh, it's called Hours in the Library by Leslie Stevens, who was. Um, her name's just completely uh, gone from my mind. Um, why am I, I can't think of this. Um, Virginia Woolf. And it's three volumes that he put out, Hours in the Library. It's an introduction by Jonathan Steinberg. Uh, this volume one, 1991. And there's Sir Leslie Stevens. Um, he, one of those Victorians that never slept, never ate. Uh, but <coughs> uh, this is basically, he goes through certain authors and talks about them, talks about their books. And I really enjoy uh, them because I um, he talks about some books by authors that I hadn't have never seen. I don't even uh, there's some that I want to look for, like by uh, Defoe, Daniel Defoe, uh, which is the first one. Uh, he goes Richardson novels, Pope as moralist, Sir Walter Scott, Matthew um, Hawthorne, Balzac's novels, De Quincey, Sir Thomas Brown, Jonathan Edwards, Horace Walpole, and that's for Volume One. And uh, yeah, um, they're sort of longer-ish essays, and I'm 
sort of uh, perusing through it um, every so often. Not that often, but uh, I do enjoy when I when I do pop in there, and they're nicely made. They're covered, and I got this off of uh, eBay, off of a, a thrift uh, sort of a charity shop uh, somewhere. Um, and there's a when he's older. Uh, Dr. Johnson's writings, Crab, William Hazlitt, Disraeli's novels, uh, Massinger, Fields, Fielding's novels, uh, Coper and Rousseau, The First Edinburgh Reviewers, uh, Wordsworth's Ethics, Landor's Imaginary Conversations, and Macaulay, Sir Tabas uh, Babington Macaulay. Yeah, and I, like I say, it was from a charity shop, and it was still sealed. <laughs> um, and all they wanted was seven pounds fifty for them, or something like that. Like it was, it was very cheap. Uh, this is volume three, even older in the sketch, and its third volume is Charlotte Bronte, Charles Kingsley, uh, Godwin and Shelley, Gray and his school, Stern and uh, Lawrence Stern. Country Books, George Eliot, Autobiography, Carlyle's Essex, The State Trials, and Coleridge. And I wanted, well, I really wanted to get, like, an older, there was a nice, really nice, um, um, sort of turn of the 20th century set that was in really nice red buckram, and it looked beautiful. Um, the, the, the photos looked really, really nice. Uh, they, I think they wanted like 40 pounds for it and said, you know, um, make an offer. So I offered, well, I'll be willing to pay 30 for it. That was before I looked at the folios. And they come back, refused it, and the counter offer was, remember, it's 40 pounds, was 38.50. Yeah, right. Here is Charles Maturin's Melmoth the Wanderer. Introduced by Devendra P. Varma and illustrated by Felix Zakar. Little naked devils running around on the cover. And there's the title page. Uh, that's 1993. Um, it was like the first time they did it. It's really, it's based on the first edition of 1820 with minor emendations, and I think it was. Um, uh, I always forget this. Charles Maturin is Oscar Wilde's grandfather, I think, on his mother's side or grand uncle, one or the other. Um, I don't see it here, and I always, I always forget what the relationship is. Uh, and he also took uh, uh, the name when he was in um, exile, sort of, in Paris, in France, after he was released. Um, uh, no, I'm doing these. Oh, okay, here. Uh, Tales and Mystery of Imagination by Edgar Allan Poe. Illustrated by Harry Clark. They're quite nice. The only problem with this one is it wasn't bound that properly. So it has a bit of a binding issue with it. But I've seen a couple of them and they've both been like this. Um, illustrated by Harry Clark, 1999. And you can see the beautiful um, illustrations. two pages of it. And Poe is a uh, uh, beloved writer of mine, and I have been eking out his work, because I don't want to sort of finish it. So every so often I will read a story um, that I haven't read, and then reread some others. And I had been doing that with 
this next one here with Sherlock Holmes books. But I screwed up and read them all very quickly one one time and reread, so I'm rereading now. So I'll never have anything new. This is a box set of the Sherlock Holmes novels. Or complete, no, sorry, it's the complete stories. I thought it was the novels for some reason. I need the novels set. Uh, this is The Adventures. Introduced by Peter Cushing, illustrated by Francis Mosley. It's got the silhouette, and I'll show you the silhouette on the spine once uh, it's done. I forgot I should have done that. This is 1993, it's second printing, 94. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's the... It's the uh, Adventures, which... Uh, uh, I got them in the right order here. I should be... Uh, uh, and this is illustrated by Frank Mosley again. Uh, let's try to find an illustration. There we go. And again, silhouettes on the spine and on the front. And this is second printing as well of the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes and here is uh, the return of Sherlock Holmes and again the silhouettes across the spine and continue Frank uh, Mosley it was uh, illustrator Some reminiscences of Sherlock Holmes. Again, by France, Francis Mosley, sorry. I recognize most of the illustrations. They're pretty easy to identify which stories they're from. And then, uh, the casebook of Sherlock Holmes. quite nice silhouette wise and the um, four novels are done similarly but there's different bindings I think the first binding is red I believe so uh, because I've got this one in order to keep them correct I'm going to have to get the uh, second edition there we go it's got a Book play, the next Libris, uh, R.F. Dickinson. I didn't know that when I got. Oh, it was. Yes, this was a used copy I've got off the internet. It's Pliny, a self portrait in letters, translated by Betty Radis, 1978. And there's a bust of the Emperor Domitian. And I've always liked. Uh, Pliny's letters, so I thought this, and this was extremely cheap, three three pounds, I think. The box is a bit faded. Uh, it's 1978. Uh, it's been well read, but it's still in pretty good shape. Uh, you can see it's been read with the uh, uh, thumbing on the uh, page, page edges. And, as I said, there's some sunning on the box, but I think it was like yeah, three, four pounds. Uh, here's Rule Rides by Cobbett. It's a really nice edition. I like this. I've got, I think I've got about four different editions of it. Rule Rides in the Counties of, and he goes on. Uh, edited by Ian Dick. Introduced by Rog, Richard Ingrams. Illustrated by Joe McLaren. 2010. Yeah, um, so, yeah, it's, they came out in 2010. But the editorial matter, it says 2001, so... Uh, follows the text of the 2001, the Penguin, oh, it's the Penguin edition, uh, which I do have. I don't have the 2001, I don't think. Uh, but, yeah, there's some wonderful 
illustrations again as per their usual but occasionally I think they miss fire for some reason uh, or at least with me but I'm sure somebody likes them uh, let's see here there's sort of a nondescript uh, the Newgate calendar it's basically uh, well it's, it's uh, Crime, trials, trials at Newgate um, and Newgate Prison, and uh, so and so executed for high uh, treason. At Abraham Thornton tried for murder, and that's exactly what it is. It's as with introduction by Lord Burkett, uh, 1960, second printing 94, and yeah, it's just uh, all trials. Um, Thomas Bickton, S Esquire, in, indicted for applying the torture uh, to Louisa Calderton to exhort a confession. John Holloway and Owen Haggerty executed for murder. And it just goes through. And these were at um, a thrift shop, or well, thrift shop in the U.S., but charity shop here in the U.K. A few more to go for the shelf taking a little longer on them than I normally would. This is a beautiful edition of The Last Man by Mary Shelley. And it's, uh, we're all, it's all filled with uh, paintings of Kaspar David Friedrich. It's 2012, second printing 2013, the frontispiece, and these are just gorgeous. Um, and the interesting thing about them, they, they, they're almost textured. They somehow have printed them um, that looks like there's brush strokes on them. It's not just a plain. Um, it's you can't really see on the camera. Uh, there's too many in here to show them all, but they're all just amazing. And here's a London Journal. Again, some of these I've shown on book hauls and so forth. This I received in the post, uh, buying offline for really cheap as well. Boswell's London Journal, 1762 to 63, edited and introduced by Frederick A. Pottle. That's 1985. Um, yeah. It's just quite nice. It's got facsimile of writing on it. It's just quarter cloth uh, with the rest paper boards. It's illustrated. Just various illustrations. I don't really have these much in the way of order other than size to sort of fit, or at least that was the plan of trying to fit uh, bigger ones into smaller, or bigger places and smaller ones into smaller places. This is uh, English Eccentrics by Edith Sitwell. Uh, Mervyn, uh, introduction by Mervyn uh, Horder and illustrated by Rosalind Pym. Folio Society, 1994. Third printing, 1998. And there's the frontispiece. And some nice little ones here. But yeah, it's nicely done. Uh, it's again quarter cloth with paper, but uh, decorated paper. last one for the shelf which was sitting on top as you can see it's a really rough uh, case and that's sort of similar with the uh, with the lamp and this is uh, this is well I guess it's apropos Journal of the Plague Year by Daniel Defoe and it's Folio Society 1960 uh, being observations or memorials of the most remarkable occurrences as well as public and private which happened in London during the last great visitation in 1665 by Daniel Defoe 
Woodcuts by Peter Pendry. I love these woodcuts. They're really dark, but they're they're amazing. I really do like those. Um, it's a really I really enjoy the book. I've read it many times, and when I saw this. I thought I'd grab it. There's, there might be a little wear on the spine, but it's quite nice. So, there ends my folio, uh, shelf one. And there's two more shelves. Uh, so, I'll be back tomorrow with another one. And I will be back today, I think, with a tag. Uh, there's quite a few going around. And uh, I think I can do another one and an essay, hopefully. Talk to you later, BookTube.